What is going on everybody? Welcome to a new video, Madden Sunday School Episode 3, and this one is going to be on the switch concept. So right here, uh, we're in a shotgun spread formation, and now the concept I want to focus on is the one on the right with the wheel and the post. Uh, the one on the left is more of a switch dig concept. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can run switch concepts. It's very popular in the run and shoot playbook right here. We're actually in the New England Patriots playbook. They do have this concept, um, but there's a lot of different ways you can run it. They have, you know, switch concepts that are basically like smash concepts. Uh, there's just a lot of different options, but this one is the one we're going to focus on today. And the reason I really like this concept is because it makes zones... Uh, it, it puts zone defenders in just an awkward spot. They have to kind of decide what they want to do and a lot of zones will have to match this coverage and that'll give you ideal opportunities to get you know mismatches and your playmakers into open space and so uh, that's why we're going to focus on the right side here with hogan and dorsett i'll go ahead and roll you guys through uh, we're going to show cover three we're going to show cover two and we're going to go ahead and show cover four and man to man so you'll see all of these different setups we're going to go ahead and just start off with cover three here. One high look, standard cover three sky, uh, curl flat zones on the outside, uh, just the standard stock cover three. And the reason I love this play against cover three is what you're going to see is that the outside defender is forced to match with Hogan running the post route or else he's going to get open over the middle of the field. And so because the outside defender is forced to match with Hogan, that means the curl flat zone is then forced to match with Dorsett. And that's where you can get a huge mismatch on a guy like Dorsett with a lot of speed in the slot who gets an outside release. He won't get jammed because he's running a wheel route. So he'll get a nice outside release every single time. And you're going to see exactly what kind of happens here. So down the sideline, and that's a one-on-one -on -one matchup with Dorsett on a safety who's trying to get out there. And when you have a guy like Dorsett, that's the kind of outcome you can expect if you have a guy fast enough to run away from that mismatch. And that's why I love this concept is because it's all about getting that mismatch wherever it might be. Sometimes it might be over the middle. Sometimes it might be from the guy in the slot. But that's the direction you can look to against the cover three. That's going to be the matchup that you see every single time right there. I'll go ahead and run into instant replay. Uh, just to kind of show you guys and hammer it home what exactly is happening here. Uh, but you could tell the outside third zone is forced to run with the post route. If he doesn't run with the post route, right? If he just keeps sinking back, then the post route comes open over the middle of the field. He doesn't want the post route to break right here and get open. And so because the middle safety is too far back, he has to run with him to cover him up. And so that forces the outside zone defender on the curl flat to run with the wheel route. But the problem is now Dorsett has the outside leverage, Dorsett has the sideline, and so now you have, not only does he have the leverage, but you have a strong safety, in this case Keanu Neal, trying to run down the sideline in a foot race with your slot receiver. And so whenever you can get that speed mismatch in the slot, that's where this route concept is really, really going to burn cover three defenses. So that's what I love about that side of the, the formation against cover three. And that's really the read that you should be looking to make. Um, so moving on to something like a standard Tampa 2 look, uh, the reason that this play is great against Tampa 2 is because it floods that right side deep half vertically, right? It has to choose between either covering the post route or widening out and trying to cover the wheel. If it stays too skinny with the post, you hit the wheel on the sideline. If he comes to the inside to guard the post, then the wheel's wide open. Or an underneath defender has to once again try and run with the wheel route, which isn't always a great matchup for the defense. So once again, you're going to see snap the ball. It's a route concept that takes a little while to develop right there. The middle linebacker tried to sink back and make a play on it, wasn't able to get there in time. But what you can see is that that post route is ideally going to get open over the middle of the field against a Tampa two style look you this safety is forced to pull out to the sideline notice how wide he's playing because of that wheel route he has to respect the wheel route so now the post route is breaking over the middle I probably made the wrong read here I should have thrown as soon as this linebacker runs back to guard the, the post route and sees that he needs to get there you throw this dig route I should have 100% thrown this dig route just then uh, but I, I kind of tunneled onto the post right here the linebacker actually had a shot at making a play just a little too far underneath it but that's another great mesh point high low read over the middle of the field is that not only are you forcing that safety on the side to make a decision between the wheel or the post but then you're also making the middle linebacker make a decision whether he wants to guard the post or the dig and so really it's putting them in a two-way stretch uh, that there's 
pretty much no win. It's a no win situation for the defense. So once again, you'll go ahead and see right here, Tampa two. Now, like I said, uh, this route concept does take a little while to develop. So you have to hope your, your offensive line is able to hold up right there. Once again, the middle linebacker drops deep, you hit underneath. And so it's a simple high low read when it comes to cover two. Sometimes in some cases of uh, that middle linebacker, depending on how your opponent's playing, uh, you know, shade wise, you could be shading underneath or take him out of that mid read. Uh, for whatever reason, if that mid read doesn't drop back and play the post route, then obviously that post route, like right there, is going to have a ton of room to work with against this Tampa 2 style look because of the widening out of those safeties. So moving on to cover four now. And so cover four quarters, uh, cover four drop, whatever it might be. Uh, the way I like to attack this, running this concept, is really you're putting that outside quarter flat defender in kind of an awkward spot, right? So he's going to widen out. He has to widen out to the wheel route. And so when he widens out to guard the wheel, Hogan is going to cut inside of him on that post route and gain that inside leverage. And that's where you're going to find the success against the cover four look. And so what we're going to do is we're going to snap the ball here. So he widens out and you can see I got it right there. Bam. Hogan over the middle. And so the linebacker kind of sees it and tries to get over there in time, but he's just not quite able to do that. And that's it's this concept is really all about kind of your guys running in different directions than where they lined up with. That's the whole concept of the switch is that, you know, one starts outside, one starts inside, and then they basically switch spots post snap. And so right here, it puts him in an awkward spot. He has to widen out for the wheel, which opens up the middle for the post. And so this linebacker is shooting over, trying to guard the post. And then backside, once again, just like Tampa 2, you have the dig wide open. So it's it's really puts the defense, it stretches the defense horizontally and vertically at the same time, vertically because of the route concept, but then horizontally because of the switch that occurs at the snap of the ball. And so it really puts the defense in a bind um, man to man wise. So that's pretty much going to be your read against cover four is you want to watch how that flat zone defender reacts to the wheel route and being stretched and then make a read off of him. Um, in a man-to-man -man situation, what you're going to want to do, I don't want him to not line up over door set. So in this case, I'm in a four wide. They're in nickel. Ideally, your opponent would probably want to come out in something like a dime if they're play planning on playing man-to-man -man defense to match up with four wide receivers. Um, but in this case, you really just kind of have to read and, and look at who's open. And in a two-man under situation, you're not going to be able to bomb it. And so you're likely going to end up having to hit either the backside dig or the front side post. Um, if they play something like a cover one, so if I were to turn this into, say, um, a cover one style look, so an inside third and then a hook curl or something like that, you know, that's when you're going to have a lot of success being able to bomb the defense. If I go ahead and put Deion Jones over here, obviously that's a mismatch if your opponent's trying to play man to man in a nickel formation against four wide. Um, but if they don't have that two man under shell, then that's all day. You know, you get the mismatch on the outside, you get that outside leverage, you have wheels on both sides of the field. So not only can you throw that to him, but you can also go backside and look to throw it against something like, uh, you know, the backside for Cordero Patterson in this case, his backside wheel should still get solid separation against man-to-man -man coverage. It just depends on the matchup. In this case, I have a guy, Cordero, who's a little bit faster than their slot cornerback, Brian Poole, and I'm able to get that mismatch. So it's all about knowing your personnel knowing where you can get the mismatches at depending on who you're playing against and taking advantage of it. And so that's kind of the rundown for this concept out of this shotgun spread look. Now, also you can run this out of, uh, they do have it from some trip sets. So the Patriots actually have trips Y flex uh, PA switch dig. And so you can run the same thing out of here. Um, what you're going to see if I, if I go ahead and go to something like, you know, cover four or whatever, cover four again, it's the same thing. You still have the post route wheel route on the right side. Um, this time you just have Gronk over the middle running a dig route to kind of stretch the defense even more. So Gronk kind of occupies that guy over the middle of the field to make him not be able to shoot out and play where he wants to play. And then you're able to kind of take advantage from there right there. Once again, post route against cover four is usually what you're looking for uh, with the flat zone firing out for the wheel in the middle naturally being weak against a four deep defense where they're allocating all of their resources down the field. So like I said, you can both do it out of two by two sets like I was in before or three by one sets like I'm in right now. Uh, look for it in your playbook. It's in, you know, several different playbooks, even if it might not be obvious and be in the name that says switch. Uh, you can find different plays like PA wide receiver in is a good example. It has this route concept. So a lot of playbooks, you'll be able to find this route concept. I really, really like it. 
just really stretches the defense uh, both horizontally and vertically and gives them a lot to think about. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. It ran a little bit longer than normal, but there was just a lot to talk about. But as always, if you stuck around and watched the entire video, I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. And until next time, guys, take it easy.